Welcome back to another episode of Husker Huddle presented by Sap Brothers. I'm your host, Jeremiah Searles, and at Sap Brothers, they say, welcome, be our guest. Today, our guest is Tommy Armstrong, former Nebraska quarterback, current arena quarterback for the Sioux City Falls Storm, if I am getting that correct. So we're excited to have him here. We're excited to have him join us. Tommy, how have you been? I've been doing great, brother. Uh, you know, it's, it's always a great day to get outside to uh this pandemic and stuff like that so uh you know me and you've been working out a few days a week uh the net just been trying to uh stay sane uh yeah make sure i'm yeah. able to get through this this whole year without going crazy i feel you on that man it's it's been wild it's been tough but i know you were gearing up and getting ready to start your season i mean arena football was supposed to start up in i believe a couple months ago correct Yes, uh, in April. In April, so game. yeah, so April we're supposed to kick this thing off. You were training hard and ready to go, and then all of a sudden the brakes get put on it. So, what have you kind of been up to since then? How have you been staying ready? I mean, mentally, physically. I mean, you kind of had to do a full system reset there. Yeah, uh, definitely. Um, just trying to get out, do stuff, uh, make money, just to um, you know put food on the table and things like that. Help the wife with uh, bills and things like that. So. Uh, Arena ball doesn't pay a lot, but at the same time, it gets your exposure. So um, being three di three days away from my first game, uh, going to three weeks of uh, camp, that really hit us pretty hard. Uh, we're game prepping, getting ready for walkthroughs and things like that. Then the coach calls everybody up and says, uh, we probably won't have a season this year. We're going to postpone the season for four weeks. Uh, so I had to come home, you know, uh, get back in shape, uh, sign back for next year. So now I'm looking at seven months of just uh, basically the off season. Most people only see it about three or four months of off season, but now looking at six to seven months of off season. So it's just getting out there, trying to stay in shape. Like I said, we've been working out three times mm -hmm. a week. Uh, I throw with Coach Dub and uh, guys like Alonzo Moore and uh, DP and uh, Stan and Seaton, um, just because they're in the off season as well, but uh, they have a report coming up here in the next couple of days, so they just hit the road uh, actually today, um, and just trying to stay out, of, stay at, um, outside, uh, you know, being inside basically makes you go crazy here and there. You just got to get some fresh air. So, been at, been on the golf course here and there, and um, me and the wife actually going to the driving range this afternoon just to hit some balls, just to get out the house. That's awesome, man. I mean, as far as before all this happened, you had a really good you had a really good thing going up there. I mean, you had a really good rookie year your first year. I know you had a really good second year. Talk us a little bit about what arena ball was like for you. Did you enjoy it? I mean, you sure looked like you were having fun out there. Yeah, I enjoyed it. It's a uh, it's different. Uh, feels a little smaller. Uh, you're looking at 55 yards uh, long and 25 yards uh, wide, so that cuts it in half. Basically, you're looking at every decision that you have to make is a lot faster. It's kind of like the CFL, but basically just a shorter field. You could be in a game where you're down 28 points with eight minutes left in the fourth quarter, and you can come back within two or three minutes just because of how fast tempo, how fast-paced the game is, and how quickly you can score. So that's something that I enjoy just because of the fast tempo. You've seen people run 70 plays in the NFL. You yourself, it's all about just – uh you know, making smart decisions, but when it comes to the IFL, it's more of just making sure you can score points. You can win games 75 to 73 or 82 to 60. Uh, it just all depends on how many times you're out there, how many times you can score. You can score in five seconds. You can score in two minutes, three minutes. Just about ball control and being able to just throw on spots and things like that. My first year, uh, my rookie year, was actually probably my toughest year going into the first couple of games. Um, you know, we had some bumps and bruises as a as a team, but overall, I think uh, I improved uh, throughout the year just because I learned that it's all about decision making and just throwing on time. Definitely with a smaller field, um, just making poor decision as a quarterback, and I ended up winning rookie of the year that that year. And uh, going into this year, it was going to be my second year. Um, I actually went up to Sioux Falls from Grand Island because their team folded, so I was looking forward to plan for coach Riggs and that organization was competing for the job I was going to end up playing the first week so I was looking forward to it and got cut short on us 
Yeah, I mean, I think I think we'll we'll hopefully get a chance to see you back out on the football field next year and doing your thing, Tommy, because you're you're a great talent. You're a great talent here at Nebraska, and we know that you're going to continue to keep grinding it out. I mean, I know your work ethic is next to none there, so we're excited for you there. Let's switch gears a little bit here. Talk a little Husker football. I mean, you were you're not super far removed from this program. Um, you've been removed for about three years now. And you've got a chance to kind of sit back and, and watch it as a fan then, and which is almost harder to do than watching than actually playing it. But have you actually had a chance to really sit back, reflect on what your career and what you were able to do here? And what are some key moments that really stand out for you through your career here at Nebraska? Um, honestly, just uh, being able to be so resilient throughout those tough times, definitely. Um, we had that conversation a couple of days ago. The fact that just uh, – how much I progressed through my freshman year of having an O-line that was basically all NFL guys and just, uh, if you could say it, just 4.0, 8 plus <laughs> all across the board. You guys uh, teaching me as much as you, you guys could throughout those eight or nine games that I was starting. It, um, it helped me a lot. And I tell you, you guys that all the time that I really appreciate that just because it helped me grow into the person that I was my senior year. Just um, seeing how much you guys worked, your work ethic, how much uh, you wanted your guys to believe in the front five. And um, that's what I took out of just playing my freshman year to my senior year was no matter what the situation was, I wanted my guys to look at me and say, hey, you know, this guy is actually giving it their all or his all. And um, that's what I, I've learned throughout the time that I was a quarterback was just if you can, you know, just put it all on, out on the line for your teammates, for your brothers. Um, like Coach Bo always say, you know, look to your left and your right. You have to, you know, play for those guys to your left mm -hmm. and your right because at the end of the day, when you're out on that field, that's all that, that you have. You know, of course, our fan base is incredible, but once you're out, it's all about game of inches and, that guy that's been going through off season and summer workouts with you or is the guy that that's out there. And I've, I've learned so much from that, just having you guys as offensive line, having freshmen offensive line and young guys like that, just being able to see how they looked at me as a leader, as a guy that always worked hard, no matter through injuries and things like that. It's just, how do you want to be remembered at the end of the day? And, um, just looking at that Nebraska team, it's, it's a lot of guys that, you know, I've talked to that just, you know, they just want to get out there and teach those guys the right way and basically pay, uh, pave the way for them to be successful in the future. Yeah, I mean, you know what it's like to be the quarterback in Nebraska. It, it's tough. I mean, you are the focal point when it comes to everything. The offense doing well, it's because of you. And it, even if it's not, if the offense doing bad, it's definitely because of the quarterback. And it is a tough position. I mean, you see Adrian now going into year three. I think year three, and, and you could correct me if I'm wrong, as a starter, year three is where things really start to slow down for you. I mean, year one, you're kind of pure, playing off pure adrenaline still, which I think Adrian did a little bit. Year two, you kind of think you have it figured out, and then you get hit in the face a little bit and realize you don't. And then year three is kind of where you put it all together. Going into year three here, what would your advice be? And I'm sure you probably actually maybe even talked to him for a guy like Adrian Martinez, who had a tough year last year, but is looking to bounce back, looking to have that breakout season that we know he's capable of. What are, what are kind of your thoughts on quarterback Adrian Martinez and also maybe some on Luke McCaffrey? Um, just both of those guys are, are huge competitors. I've seen, you know, their work ethic. Uh, Luke is a guy that's, um, for the fan base, is just a, a fresh face, um, just a fresh new guy that, you know, they've, you know, basically, you know, talked about for so long and seen, you know, some Spurgeons here and there, how well he can he can play. Mm -hmm. And Adrian, on the other hand, he's a, a two-year starter going into his third year. For me, I was a two-year starter. And going into my third year, the more I got comfortable with the offense, then I had a coaching change, which basically drew me back to year <laughs> one. And, and, you know, that's basically for him. I wanted to touch bases on that because this is his third year in this offense, his third year with this coaching staff. So it should be a lot easier. And I think one thing that he has to understand that I had to understand my second year going into my third was you have playmakers, you have guys that can 
ball. You have to trust in them mm. to make decisions and and put you in the right situation. Um, for me, I thought that I could do everything, and I could just you know win games for for us. I could put everything on my back and say, "Hey, look, I got it." If things go wrong, it's on me. If things go right, you know, I was gonna be the guy that you know made sure that I put everybody in position. But at a certain point in time, you gotta realize like. All you have to do is your job. And I think Adrian, for his first year, he did so well of going in and just putting the ball out there for guys that could make plays. His second year, he kind of hit that that speed bump to where it was like, okay, things are getting tough. I have to do this. I have to do that. But I think for him, his third year, he has to just understand they're going to put 10 other guys around you to make the team better. You just have to, you know, just – be there for them, teach them as much as you can, because right now he is that veteran guy that they're looking at. He's that that captain that they want to lead their team, but at the same time he has to realize when he's out there in that game, he has a lot of playmakers. He's just got to put the ball out there for them to make plays and just live to fight another down. You know, uh, we watched so many games last year where he he had certain situations where I've had the same thing happened to me where I think that I can do certain things with my legs instead of throwing the ball away and maybe just trying to cut back inside, lose five or six yards, turn a second and three to third and 10. And now all of a sudden we're in a bad situation. So I think uh, his decision making the things going to come very, very just, I think that honestly he just has to put into consideration that this third year is, is more about him improving for himself to help his guys around him because he's going to have a bunch of young guys. You know, he doesn't have JD anymore. A guy that's a, you know, that was going to be a senior mm-hmm. that they looked for for being a captain and things like that. But, you know, he had other things off the field that he had to worry about and he had to make a, a family decision. And I respect him for it. At the same time, um, Adrian just has to understand now it's going to be a lot more pressure on him. And he has to just go in with a clear mind and just understand that it's time for him to, you know, make that decision to be the captain, be that guy that everybody's looking for him to be. That's a great point, Tommy. I think that a lot of people don't understand the mind of a quarterback in that regard. So that's that's really good insight there about the trust because I definitely think there was times last year where Adrian wanted to throw the ball and hoping that the guy was at the comeback at 11 yards, but he's like, well, what if he's at 13 or what if he's at 10? And that split second can be the difference between an interception or a sack or whatever it might be. So I, I think that you're – I think you nailed it. I think that's what we'll see out of a, a – a veteran um, Adrian Martinez this year and I think that we're also going to see I know you're a big Saints fan but I wouldn't be surprised if we see Luke McCaffrey as a Taysom Hill type right special packages getting him out there let him do some special things because I mean he is a special talent and we need to make sure we can find ways to get him on the football field exactly and so, I think one thing go you ahead. touch bases or uh, one thing that you touch bases on um, you just got to understand that Adrian has to stay healthy this year mm-hmm. and I think uh one thing that keeps him healthy is having packages for uh, Luke and just having him go out there and go in in certain uh, certain situations. Maybe you know in the red zone to have him go out there and you know run the ball a few times just to get Adrian some breaks here and there. Just because you know he's he's hit that that, that time in his in his career where you know he has to take care of his body. Yeah, that's big time. Adrian struggled to make it through a full season healthy, and I think that. I was talking about this with, I think, maybe you. This might be the first true quarterback competition that we've seen in a really long time here at Nebraska. And not that that's a bad thing. It's good to have starters that are multiple-year starters. But, again, no one should fear away from competition at a level of competition that is the University of Nebraska. Competition only breeds greatness. The guy in front should always be looking over his shoulder because the guy behind should always want to be passing that. And that just makes a better football team. So I think we'll see a little bit more competition at that level because I think Adrian's leash will be a little bit shorter this year than it was last year with Luke not having to worry about the red shirt. But I'm excited for this year. I mean, no spring. I'm hoping it's going to be happening this year. But, uh, but, Tommy, I want to thank you for joining us here on Husker Huddle, presented by Sap Brothers. Um, Husker, Sap Brothers is top priority is to keep guests and teammates safe. Sap Brothers is offering full service at the pump as our nation relies now more than ever on drivers and farmers to provide essentials to our communities. Sap Brothers is committed to serving you. So, Tommy, before we let you go here, I just want to give you the floor. You got anything you want to say to Husker Nation? Um, we have loved watching you. We're excited to be back in contact with you here at the Husker Sports Network. I'm sure we'll be doing some more stuff together in the fall. Yes, sir. Um, other than that, I appreciate it. And uh, 
Go Big Red, baby. We Absolutely. got a season. Absolutely, Tommy. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll catch you here next week. Yes, sir. Thank you.